Hey everyone, it's Logan here. I wanted to bring you something, a slight aside, but something I found pretty unique. This is a Mitsubishi electric motor, um, or rather the shell of one. And I'll show you the insides, the guts here in just a minute. But this is a, a 200 watt uh, motor, 1.3 amps there. And this is something that we use at work. We use it to power the uh, machines we make. And this one was broken. So I thought maybe I would take it home and take it apart and show you guys what's actually inside. So this is a servo motor, which means it keeps track of its position. And in fact, this actually has three sections here. There is normally an, another plastic part on the top here, but again, it was broken. Um, so you can see what it would look like there. There's a plastic part where the shaft comes through and there's an encoder on there where the motor actually keeps track of its rotation and feeds that information back. So now really this is only half of the motor. Um, the other half is what's called an amplifier, which is what sends power to this. You program it, you tell it what you want to do, that amplifier receives signals from a controller, and then sends power out to the motor. So um, here are the guts of this motor. So let's take this apart and, and see what we got. So this top section, this is where the brake is. I'll explain that here in a second. And this is the power section. One thing I thought was kind of unique, I had never actually looked inside one of these before. Sorry, it's a little bit dark there. I'd never actually looked inside of it before, but they encase all of their wires, um, their whole stator section, inside some kind of a plastic. I thought that was kind of interesting. I started carving this out here, and I found there is aluminum underneath it, but normally these wires are exposed. Uh, but they don't. Once they wire it, they actually completely encase it in uh, in plastic or some kind of uh, composite material. So I thought that was interesting. But that's the drive section. So this is where the stator is, and there's the rotor, and so that's what actually powers that. And then just a case, and so the, uh, the bearing will be inside there. I took the bearing out. It's actually a pretty nice bearing. The other bearing is still sitting on there. You can see that. So... Here is the electronic component of the encoder. And what actually happens is it shines a light. There it is. There you can see it. It shines a light that bounces around back and forth. And it that's pretty much all it does. But it also does some calculations with that. And I don't know how well this is going to come through on camera, but you can see there's really, really tiny little sections there. Uh, where it's actually shining light through and, and based on the number of large and small uh, sections that turn by it, it can keep track of how many positions it it uh, has moved to know exactly where it is. And um, the machines that we have are typically within, or, or build rather, are typically within a thousandth of an inch. But these servos are regularly keeping track of a hundred thousandth, uh, a three hundred thousandth of an inch really really small numbers so they can be very very accurate and the cool thing is depending upon how you program them they can catch up so in other words you can give them leeway to be out of position uh, and then they will do calculation to say okay i need to spin faster in order to catch back up within the amount of time and if they can't they'll throw an error code or if anything happens they'll shut down rather than lose position and they'll give you an error code on here so this is uh and this is glass this is one of these particular motors big selling points is that they're using a glass encoder so very clear very accurate there we go but i have to say we did a quote-unquote drop test on this once we knew it was bad we just wanted to see what happened that's why there's no black piece on top of here we threw it on the ground and it the plastic crack, cracked and that was about it <laughs> everything else is still fine the glass didn't break it's a pretty hardy motor but this is a break so uh, if you want something to not turn after it loses power, that's what we got here. And you can see I cannot turn this. Now, I have been able to. If you pull it really, really hard, you can turn it. But basically, it locks this rotor from turning. And if you look inside here, I don't know if we'll be able to see that with the lighting here. Uh, no, not quite. No. That is uh, what we think is a copper disc. I haven't fully disassembled this. Uh, but there's some kind of disc inside here that slams down on top of this, and it gets pulled back up by a coil 
uh, once 24 volts is supplied to this. So give me just a second, let me rig that up, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, uh, come on now, focus. There we go. Yeah, it's not perfect focus, but now I can see, I can actually turn this, sorry about this. There we go. I can actually turn this just fine now. And I'm supplying it 24 volts. It's using about 0.3 amps. And I'm now able to turn this just fine. And if I come over here and pop that off, you heard that little clip. And now it's locked. Now I can't turn it at all. Just go ahead and pop it back on. There you go, you heard the clip. And now it's able to turn. So it's pretty ingenious. You can use it for uh, keeping things from dropping under gravity when power goes out or a number of other things as well. So that's pretty cool. I still want to take this whole thing apart at some point and just see what exactly it looks like inside that brake. But I just thought this would be a fun excursion just to into the world of servo mo motors and just seeing how a professional one is made and sold and what it looks like inside. So. Um, the amplifier, I wish I did have one of those to show you guys, but it's a, it can take single or three phase AC power and then decides how to send it out to the, uh, to the uh, motor itself and, uh, can go up to 3000 RPM. So it can go pretty fast and it puts out quite a bit of torque. It's really hard to stall one of these. And of course, if it does stall, it'll just shut down throwing air. So. I figured that'd be cool that a lot of you guys would want to see this, and uh, since I had it available, why not do a video on it? So thanks for watching. Uh, check out my other videos, and of course, have a great day.